Okay. Yes, sir. Can somebody switch on the recording? Is the recording on? Yes, sir. Okay. Fine. So in our in my last two classes, uh, last few classes, I talked about the introductory concepts of uh, object oriented approach. Then I talked about uh, a very basic C++ code, which uses uh, C and C out instead of printf scanf. And uh, I also illustrated of how uh, C in C out is more flexible and uh, it is useful compared to using scanf and printf. And in my last class, I talked about the use of manipulators, which uh, helps us in uh, customizing the output in case of C++ codes. So this much is fine. And uh, after that, I think Dipanita, she has taken a number of classes talking about some of the basics of uh, the C++ language, its syntax and all this. So let me get back to some something very essential that is pointers in C++. And uh, these pointers in C, I think uh, you are all aware of. So are you all confident in pointers in C? The concepts of pointers in C? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So I hope that it will be interactive and whatever questions I ask, you'll be able to answer. At least uh, many of you. So let's see how it goes. So in this pointers in C, uh, uh, the, the outlines, I mean, there are a number of uh, topics that I'll be revising. So in the very first class, I, I aim to discuss the basics of pointers, the uh, different operations on, on pointers, the pointers uh, pointer arithmetic. Then I'll talk about how pointers are related to constants and how arrays are related to pointers, the array notations and all. So that much I target for this first class. In the next class, I aim to talk about uh, dynamic memory allocation and deallocation in C++. And there I will be using uh, mostly the focus will be to use new and delete instead of malloc on, uh, or free that we have that you have used in C. So we'll try to see the advantages of using new and de delete and we'll try to allocate one dimensional, two dimensional or higher dimensional arrays using new and delete operators. And we'll see the different cases uh, that appears. We'll also talk about allocating array of pointers and all this. And then uh, uh, probably in the uh, third uh, lecture in this series, I'll be talking about reference variables and how that is important and why references are often used in C++ instead of pointers are preferred, right? And then passing uh, arrays to functions and uh, different options for that or function pointers that also we'll discuss. So once you have a uh, sound understanding of uh, pointers in C++, uh, these underlying concepts will be used in many ways uh, during the C++ course uh, that we'll see. So let's talk about address of a variable or object. Now we, we prefer to uh, use the term object instead of variable because we know that uh, object is an instance of a class and variable is the instance of a uh, data type. So both in C++, uh, we, we prefer to use the term object. Okay, so address of an object. So before we do that, the RAM, what is RAM? RAM is basically a hardware circuit where you have got flip flops and all. And each flip flop is capable of storing a zero or one, a bit. And uh, so, so the hardware circuit is just like a chip and it, it, can, it can store a number of, I mean, say these days, uh, uh, several gigabits of uh, bits, uh, gigabits it can store. So the thing is, instead of having that uh, physical hardware view uh, for programmers, it is enough to have a more simplistic view like this. Okay, so it's a schematic view where we view RAM as a collection of locations, right? So RAM is a collection of memory locations. 
and for simplicity let's, let us assume that each location is capable of storing 8 bits so it is just one byte so no matter what the hardware supports let us have this simplistic view of a ram and generally when we declare a variable or object say i write intx or inty or float f whatever what we do we basically send a request to the compiler to allocate some space for that particular variable right and uh, if it is an integer it depends on the compiler it may be two bytes or it may be four bytes if it is a float it, it, it will be generally four bytes it's a if it is a character it will be one byte so depending on the compiler it has got some policies that how much space it will allocate for a particular data type inbuilt data types that also you know so who actually uh, allocates the space you, you make the request to the compiler but then who which particular element of the computing system performs this allocation can you tell me how it is getting done by the compiler who helps him uh, who helps the compiler hello sir, sir uh, the sir the malloc calloc no okay. don't forget about the malloc calloc i am just i am just starting system operating. see i am just telling int x i declare int x there is no malloc calloc here so that means whenever during compilation it receives uh, it scans int x then the compiler knows that it has to allocate some space right this maybe sir. two bytes of space now who performs the allocation that is what i mean in the ram that i have shown in the towards the right so the cpu no cpu uh, my point is in terms of uh, the software so in which system software performs this sir os sir, operating, operating system. system why because os is the uh, what is the role of the os os is a resource manager it's like the hotel manager or it's like the mess manager okay so in your hostels you have got a hostel manager kind of thing right uh, so what is his task so whenever say me in hall 5 so the maybe the third year students will be allocated hall 5 now the third year students came one by one they are coming and the mess manager or the hostel manager he knows how many rooms are there how many floors are there and all this and he keeps a track of the available rooms and the you know rooms which are allocated and all this so if a new student comes, he says that, okay, uh, he knows that he's, or maybe it's a, maybe it's a combination of different years. So in the hall five, the policies uh, say final year students, maybe they are third year students, second year students like this. So the manager finds that final year students, as per the policy, he will be allocated four by uh, four rooms, a group of block of four rooms, third year students will be allocated a block of three rooms, second year block of two rooms like this. So he actually maintains where the free rooms are available and he, he actually makes the allocation. So here also this, the, the list of available or free locations are maintained by the operating system. And the operating system does not only maintain the availability or the allocation of these uh, memory locations, but it also manages CPU, it also manages IO devices. So it's basically the, uh, the operating system is basically the system resource manager, right? and each of the module that uh, you will have i think many of you know and otherwise there will be a course on operating system where we'll learn more details about it so here the operating system the memory management module specifically deals with this allocation deallocation policies and these functions so basically uh, the compiler will make the request to the memory management module and it will find out some space hopefully and it will be able to allocate now the thing is now so the point is you made the request in x5 but you don't know where the value, uh, where the space for X will be allocated. Say, for example, it has been allocated here, right? But if I, if as a programmer, if you want to know the space, uh, know the locations where it has been allocated, that you can do, right? So you cannot say that, so as a student, you cannot say that I will be, uh, I want to occupy the first room in the first floor. You cannot do that. But once the allocation has been done by the mess manager, you can ask that, okay, what is my room number or which rooms you have allocated for me. So that is possible. So in this case, the address of operator lets us know <clears throat> the location where the uh, allocation has been taken place, right? <clears throat> so the point is uh, now this memory locations, 
uh, in a simplistic view each location each logical uh, location is identified by a uh, unique unsigned value right and you all know that that is called address right it's like the room numbers here it is a uh, memory location addresses there are the room addresses here the memory location addresses and the bigger the uh, ram is the more the number of uh, rooms will uh, locations will be and the higher the number of digits need to be uh, used to uh, actually address them right so if i have done these three allocation i mean declarations a integer variable a float variable and a character variable and let us assume that the compiler that we are using has a policy of allocating two bytes for integers four bytes for float and one byte for character and this has been actually done by the operating system and the programmer is happy with that but he wants to know the actual locations so what will be the value printed here here and here so this address of operator it will provide you the address of x now x has been allocated two bytes so if i say address of x so which byte uh, which location do i mean sir four so this is basically the starting of the base address of the block so if you are a final year student so it will you will be allocated say four consecutive rooms say as per the policy because we have got uh, the status and all this so the thing is if you are allocated rooms from 7 8 9 10 so you uh, he will say that okay your room number is 7 because you know and he also knows that right from uh, starting from 7 it will be the next four rooms uh, uh, that will be allocated for you okay so if it is say address of x so this will be the this value of 4 right so this 4 will be displayed here what will be the address of y so among this 9 10 11 12 this four uh, uh, say block of locations its address of y will be the starting address of the block that is here it is 9 and address of z is trivial because it just requires one byte or one location it will be 14 is that fine hello yes sir yes sir yes, so this is trivial right so let's see the next thing so storing addresses so you would like to uh, store addresses so you know that what address means who allocates but even though we cannot control the allocation of the space but we we if we want we can uh, ask and we can know the addresses where it has been allo where allocation took took place so now the same thing if these are the three declarations so if i would like to so what are addresses if if i ask what is an address memory address what kind of value it is unsigned kind of unsigned so if i so now my task is to store addresses so if i declare two unsigned integer values a1 and a2 and if i assign the address of x to a1 and address of y to a2 so will it work will it work if no, i just sir. compile hmm? no, now no. if i just compile this portion of the code so this portion if i compile will it work yes sir it will work right so what values it will give so my question is will it work means will it compile or not so what is the value of x here x means the value of x five. is it's 5 what is a1 a1 now what we have assigned a1 you have assigned the address of, this means address of x address of x means we already found that it is 4 so 4 has been assigned to a1 so a1 you see this is a1 and a1 uh, it is in, uh, unsigned integer so it also will require two bytes and has stored binary of 4 right and so values are actually stored in binary but for readability i have just uh, stored in uh, have shown in decimals right so let us ignore it so the what is the value of a1 a1 will be Four. What is the value of this one? Address of x. It will be. Just tell me the answer fast because no. there are so many. It will be four, right? What will be y? So y will be two point three. Two point three. What is a two? Uh, sir, a two will be uh, nine. So a two means it is storing the address of y. So that we know nine. So it will be nine. And what is 
so here we are asking explicitly the address of x uh, y that will be definitely 9 right so up to this part is there any problem we have stored the addresses no, and sir. it is showing the addresses so we are happy with that now let us see if we do something like this so see out i write a1 divided a1 multiplied by 2 and a2 divided by 2 so what do we expect here so what value it will be shown here so a1 is equals to 4 they want a1 multiplied by 2 it will be 8 right and what will be a2 divided by 2 it will be a2 is 9 a2 divided by 2, 2 will be a2 divided by 2 will be 4.5 4 sir okay so let it be let it be 2.0 2 so what will be the value here 4.5 4.5 right 4 so it is 4.5 now the thing is so are you happy with this whatever it shows Now what you are trying to do, so addresses are something like my room, so your room number is 18. Now you say your, uh, so somebody divides your room number uh, or say your room number is 19, somebody divides your room number by 2 and multiplies with 2.4 and, and like this. So so the thing is you say that what, what are these, these are completely absurd because addresses, telephone numbers, so if somebody, you know, uh, performs a division with the telephone numbers, so definitely these are numbers, but these are numbers which not necessarily will be multiplied or divided. Maybe you can add something to it. So the thing is, uh, few things will seems to work, but you are not happy because these are something like absurd, right? So memory location addresses or room numbers or telephone numbers cannot be divided or multiplied. And what about this one? If I write a1 plus 1, what do we expect? a1, what is a1? It is 4. If I write a1 plus 1, it will its value will be? What value will be displayed, displayed here? Five. It will be five. five. A two plus one, it will be ten. Ten. Now the thing is, now your say maybe this is your room number, right? You are a final year student, this is your room number, and your room number says that your room number is. So if it says that, what is your room number? You say it's room number nine, because following all the four will be your rooms, like uh, you know a block of rooms that has been allocated to you because of your uh, final year status, right? So if somebody says that, so this means, so A2 is storing your room number. Now, if I write A2 plus one, what do we expect? So it shows 10, but what uh, it actually implies to state A2 plus one, if A2 is your room number, so A2 plus one means, what is the room next to me, right? Are you getting the point? or I mean, all the five final students are staying one after the other. So if I write a two plus one, what I supposed to have, what I expect here, what I expect, what value I, I should expect here, nine and starting from mine, this is, this is my room. So I would expect something, if I write a two plus one, what do I expect? I would expect the room the number, third. room number say 13 uh, or uh, the room number, of my friend who stays next to me, right? So instead of 10, I would probably expect here something like 13. Is that okay? Are you getting the point? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because that is logical. You say that final year students each occupy four rooms. So if I am the final year students having room numbers nine, so the next room means it should not be 10 because it's still you are within my block of room. So it should be actually 13 and then after 13 it should be actually 17 like this. So the thing is now if I try to add one or two, it, it simply does normal arithmetic, but it is not doing kind of you can say it's point pointer arithmetic. I want something different than what it is showing. Instead of this a1 plus one displaying five, what do you expect here? What do you expect? A1. Six. Six. is pointing to integers, each of which occupies two bytes. So it should be four. If I add one to it, it should not be pointing to five. It should be, it should be uh, incremented to six, right? Is that fine? Yes, sir. So here also something that we expected is not the outcome. So the thing is the conclusion is the normal arithmetic may not always be applicable to address variables. Uh, I mean, always may not be applicable and the variables or address object addresses therefore cannot be stored in normal unsigned variables. So that is something. 
striking, right? And we need some uh, some special variables to store addresses. Like because of these anomalies or because of these absurd uh, situations, we probably don't, although it, uh, it can store, but when you try to operate on it, it will not work the way we want it, right? And therefore, for storing addresses, we need special variables and which are actually called pointer variables. Is that fine? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's the reason why a different type of variable, uh, different kind of variable is required for storing addresses and dealing with addresses, which probably will deal with or add, uh, deal with all the discrepancies or the anomalies that we just now highlighted. So addresses are stored in special variable called pointer variables, and we need a different. Now the thing is, you just now saw that if you are storing addresses of integer entities, when you increment it by one, it should be incremented by how much? How much amount? Two, two units. Hmm? How many bytes? Sir, so two bytes. Two and bytes. if it is a float, so if the if the address is pointing to uh, a floating point entity, then each time it will be incremented, it will be incremented by four, four. right? So the thing is, if you think that you will be having a particular uh, a, a floating, uh, sorry, a pointer variable, a single pointer variable, which will be able to store the address of integers or float or character, you are completely wrong because their capacity or the number of locations that they actually need is different. And if you really need to do that, so you have to have different type of pointer variables for storing different type of variables, right? So for integers, probably you need a pointer variable, but which can only point to integer variables so that whenever you increment, you will be incremented by two by two, that, that's all. But for but storing, sir, hmm, so but yes. sir, void pointer can store is a generic pointer. I want. Let's let's talk about void pointer later on. Let not because you first understand the the basic things, and I'll come to that void pointer. Okay, let us focus on this first. I'll come to that. Let us assume that there is no void pointer at this moment, right? Uh, so yes. for for the time being, let us assume that uh, I'll come to it. So the thing is, for floating point variables, if you use an integer pointer, it will be wrongly doing things because it knows that if I am an integer pointer. I'll be incrementing by plus two, plus two, plus two whenever I'm I'm asked to increment. But a floating point pointer should actually increment by four, by four, by four every time you ask it to increment, right? So to have that distinction, you have to define a pointer variable of a specific type to that uh, towards the type of entity that it can point to. But because it's a variable, an integer pointer can point to either integer variable i or some point integer variable j or some point integer variable p like that. So now let's come to this point. So integer, integer uh, say x1, 5 and x2, 10. So this is an integer variable x, uh, x1, which is storing 5, 2 bytes. x2, another integer variable, which is storing the value 10. This also occupies 2 bytes. And there's a floating point variable y, which stores 2.5. So this is a floating point variable y, 4 bytes, 2.5. So now if I define, so how do I read this? So how do I, so the thing is, how do I declare then, how do I declare pointer variables? You all know this, so just quickly browse through it. So how do I, so what is this pi? How do I read it? pi is a, pi is a pointer variable pointing to integers, right? So pi is a pointer variable. So you, you read it like this. pi is a pointer variable is capable of pointing to any integers or pi is a pointer variable capable of storing the addresses of any integer entity, right? At this moment, it is storing the address of integer variable x1. What value p1 will store then? Sorry, I mean pi will store then? So pi is also a variable, right? So pi so we have to declare, so it's a pointer variable. So pi is also a variable. Let us assume that pi, so your question should be how much amount pi will require? Because we know integer requires two bytes, float requires four bytes, character requires one byte. So this pi, how much byte it requires? So the thing is pi, you know, pi is actually storing these addresses, right? And addresses are unsigned integers. So you can consider in that way that if pi is basically pi is a, 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 I mean, storing unsigned values. So it should be 
occupying the same space as it is required by an integer unsigned integer so it's just two bytes so that way you can uh, put the logic that pi will also require two bytes here the two bytes and if i write uh, the address of x1 to pi which is a pointer variable what value it will store here the address of x1 what is the address of x1 it is 7 right what value it will be stored here 7 so if i write c out x what it will display what will display here what is x1 five. 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 what is asterisk of pi now the thing is now the thing is uh, because five. pi so pi is storing the value of x1 so it can point to x1 right so if i know your address if i know the address of cr of your batch okay so if i know where which room he stores so if somebody asks that or maybe the hod asks me okay do you know the cr of this uh, second year cac i say yeah i know that so i can just i know literally i can point my finger towards his room okay go that way and you will find his room right so the same thing if pi is storing the address of xi so it can literally point to the location and that's why you know those arrows are denoted these are schematic schematically we can say that pi is capable of pointing because he's pi is now storing the address of integer variable x1 right now the thing is because pi can know so if i know your address so probably i can get into your room and you know check what is there inside your room i can alter your uh, you know contents of the room i can throw out something i can do anything right i mean uh, assuming that okay the, the rooms are not locked properly so the thing is this pi if it knows the address of the integer variable x so i can probably use some operator to get to know the contents of the location that it points to right so pi points to the location 7 and the contents that is uh, that is inside that location 7 can be obtained by some operator what is that operator so this is called indirection operator right so this asterisk is called the indirection operator so if, if i write asterisk pi that means the uh, the machine will take me to that location and it will get me these values stored here so what value it will be stored or it will be displayed here so five five right but if i write just pi what value it will be stored uh, what value it will be displayed pi seven. pi is seven. a variable seven. and pi means the contents of pi so the contents of pi is seven so pi means the contents of pi asterisk pi means the contents which are uh, uh, which are there in the location pointed by pi right that is a distinction and if i write pi plus uh, plus plus what does it mean what value you will get here nine, nine. nine. so, so pi seven. plus plus what hmm? so seven see look carefully pi plus plus i am telling so next location 23 hmm? 23 Eight. why 23 because pi is at 21 so two bytes will be occupied and next location will be 20 see what does it mean pi plus plus what does it mean what do you mean by pi plus plus so pi plus plus this means what this means pi equals uh, assign pi plus one right this is what it means this means this do you agree yes sir so now and this has been parenthesized right the whole thing will be done so what what is done so pi what is pi what value pi contains Seven. plus one means what eight will it be eight no sir pi will plus eight no. It has the same problem. So that is the reason why we didn't use or store the these addresses in uh, normal unsigned values. So what kind of arithmetic it will take place here? So pi is seven, but if I write pi plus one, will it be incremented to eight? No. Are you, somebody answered. I cannot see the faces or the names. So are you getting me? So this will Nine. be so normal arithmetic will not be applicable here. So pi plus one means because these pi's are special variables you see these are pointer variables and this will act in a different way the way we expect it so pi plus one means what so pi was storing seven 
so pi plus 1 means now it will the the system will know that what pi points to pi points to integers which each of which occupies two bytes so if i increment the current location uh, that it stores 7 it should be incremented to 9 right 9 should be stored to 9 so the thing is here what arithmetic will be so this is a pointer arithmetic will be applicable and that value so this is, uh, 7 plus 1 is actually you can think of that 7 plus size of int right because it's a integer pointer so 7 plus size of the element that it points to will be actually done and this value of 9 will be stored in the pi so what will be displayed here 9 9 and if you if you uh, write something like this uh, or, or say if you give a asterisk here what do you expect if you give a asterisk here so pi plus 1 uh, so sorry pi plus plus so from 7 it got incremented two times because it basically pointed to this 9 and then you are giving us asterisk so what do you expect asterisk pi plus plus so garbage well so it will be it will be actually uh, it is playing you see it will what, be whatever it will be at address yeah, whatever nine. it is so we really don't know and anything that you don't know you say it's a garbage because i mean it may be useful to somebody but it is not useful to you uh, to you right so that is anything that is uh, that uh, it's not useful for me it's a garbage right garbage is a, a very relative issue because that something that is garbage to you may 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 be useful to me right so in this case it will be printing garbage because i i really don't know what is stored here but definitely there will be some bit patterns and it might be displaying something like 12 or say 20 or 23 or minus 2 doesn't matter but this will be i mean to me it will be garbage i can simply i should ignore it right so up to this is it fine yes sir yeah so so uh, who just mentioned that pi plus uh, plus plus will be uh, incremented to 8 have you got the difference have you got the point yes sir so whenever you are using pointer variables the very reason that you are using pointer variables instead of unsigned integers is that you want to force pointer arithmetic right from this point and that makes sense because you are basically just like a so uh, these are just like pi so if 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 the like uh, these values are the faculties and this pi uh, are the pas of the faculties i mean pm is a personal assistant so they knows that what the addresses are it's something like that or pi is a person who is just storing the addresses of integers or floats like this that's all so if you ask that okay i want to get the next address next address to him the next address means the next address of the next faculty or the next integer to him the next address is not just the next value so that's why it will enforce pointer arithmetic right if i do something like this what happens so the same pi i have which i have declared here i am assigning the address of x2 right so what this pi uh, pi will be storing here x2 what value will be stored here what is the address of x2 2 ha ah, don't take so much of time because these are all done uh, already so uh, see out x2 so can you just specify the values that will be displayed here x2 will be 10 asterisk p1 means p1 it will take you to that location and it will dig out the contents and display the contents that is what indirection means so here you are asking that okay what uh, say uh, what are the contents in his room you are just like asking that if i know the address of the cr somebody asks here that what are the contents so how many chairs or how many tables are there in his room like that so what value i am displaying here 10 here also 10 but and if i just write pi means i am I, so the contents of this variable pi it will be displaying 2 and what about this one 4 4 will be 4 because it will be skipping 2 to 4 it will be pointing to this location right 
so then it will be storing four so what about this one so now we know that if i want to store the address of y i cannot do it in the same pi right so pi's are variable pi is a variable which can store only integers addresses right there so a faculty can store probably the addresses of crs the hod can store probably the address of what whom hods they are not supposed to know all the crs addresses and all because they are busy persons so the hods can know the addresses of maybe faculties something like this okay and then uh, the deans are knowing the address of say hods so here to store so this to store the address of a floating point variable so what i do here so what does it mean how do i read this how do i read this statement this declaration pf is a pf is a pointer variable pointer variable capable of pointing to float float, float type float. entities any float type entity at a time it can it can point to or it can store the address of any float type entities so that is how we should read so what what will be the display of this output of this y 2.5 so this is y is 2.5 we can see uh, this is 2.5 and because we have stored the address of y so address of y what is address of y it is 15 so we basically stored in pj the value 15 the unsigned value so this will be so now if i write asterisk pf uh, sorry this is pf let us say it is pf so just a uh, yes messed it up so pj so pj was uh, pointing to x2 so i think pj was pointing to x2 that was 2 right so i would like to for pf there should be so this is pf right so this pf pf is storing the value 15 is that fine now so that because of that pf is capable of pointing to this y so asterisk pf means i want to get into this contents of it so it will be displaying 2.5 and if i just write pf it will be displaying 15 and if i write pf plus plus what does it mean 19 19 pf plus 1 now this pf is actually pf was storing 15 plus 1 means is basically size of float right so that means pf so 4 uh, 15 plus 4 19 so here it will be storing the value 19 that means effectively if i ask pf to increment once it was pointing to 15 it will be skipping and pointing to this if i again ask to increment it will be pointing to this like this because it somehow assumes that okay there is a collection of float point values one after the other, stored one after the other so if i am pointing to the first one if i if somebody ask me to increment i will be pointing to the second element second float element and if i ask it to increment it will be pointing to the third specific float element like this so got the difference hello yes sir yes sir so now if i write now the thing is how much space pf requires and pj requires pi requires as you can see here no matter what type of element they point to but addresses but basically they are storing addresses right so the address of a integer is just an unsigned value address of a float is also an unsigned value address of a character is also an unsigned value so any pointer variable no matter what the type of the pointer variable is they will just require two bytes right i mean it might vary based on the compiler but it will all be the same no matter what whatever the type of the pointer it is so see pf is a floating point type pointer pi is a integer type pointer but if i write size of what does it mean size of int asterisk means what what does it mean how do i read this size of size integer, integer pointer right pointers. size so of integer, integer pointer. pointer and this means size of float pointer so both of these two so this will display how much 
so two and this also hopefully it will be two so you have to run in your respective compiler and you need to see that whether it is two or four whatever so generally it will be two uh, but it will be all the same you see but you see whenever you are incrementing pi plus plus it is incremented by two by two each time but if you are incrementing pf it is incrementing by four by four plus 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 like that but the size that each of them require is just two bytes you see this is two this is two because they are after all storing what unsigned integer values which are addresses is that part fine so yes. any point at type variable requires two bytes of space now again this two you should verify in your own compiler but it will be same for any type of pointer variables so now let us talk about multiple indirections so the one uh, that just now i was talking about so if we have say think of the situation so if we have say this integer is uh, i is 15 so this is a student a normal student and this pi is somebody who can store the uh, a normal student's address right so this is like this so if i if i want to store the address, so but what this pi pi is also a variable right so this you see p, this is pi so i is a integer variable and pi is a integer pointer variable integer pointer variable so this also will have some space so as address of i is what is address of i in this case what is the address of i five five now if i ask what is the address of pi because pi is also a variable what is the address of pi two address of pi is two right contents of pi is different but address of pi is two and what is the address of uh, and now if i want to store the address of pi that is a value two somewhere say in in some other variable p2 what should be a type of p2 integer see how do i read this part i how do I read this part? So pi is a pointer to integer, right? How should I read p2? p2 is a pointer. p2 also should be a pointer to what? p2 should be a pointer to? Integer pointer. Integer pointers. So that, you, you see, I mean, if I don't put the circles and squares, it should be integer pointer pointer p2, right? Are you getting the point? That should that is how I should read it. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Now, so this this is a P two. So this P two is this. It also now how much space P two requires? How much space this P two will require? Two. So P two will also require two. Uh, also, it doesn't matter who it points. Any pointer. If it is an integer point, it's a pointer to integer, or it's a pointer to integer pointer, it's a pointer to float, doesn't matter. All will require the same space because they are all storing merely unsigned integer values, right? But the purpose of their incrementation decrementation will differ, that's a different thing, right? So P2 also will require just two bytes, but I am storing the address of P1 into P2. So address of P1 is two, so I'll be storing here two. So what does it mean? So P1 storing the address of i is capable of pointing to i now p2 who stores the address of p1 is capable of pointing to p1 now if i would like to store the address of p2 also what should i do in some variable say p3 then p3 because i want to store the address it should be a pointer variable right so p3 is a pointer to whom to what type? Integer pointer pointer. So it's a pointer to pointer to integer. That is how I read, right? So P3 is a pointer to pointer to pointer to integer. P2 is a pointer to pointer to integer. Like that. And how many, how much space P3 requires? Two. It's two still five. the same because no matter what it points, it will also be two. But now what is the address of, sorry, what is the address of P2? Address of P2 is 9, the base address, and it will be storing 9. So once it is done, 
Now this will be capable of pointing to this P2, right? Is that fine? Yes, sir. So now, what does it mean? So if I write C out I asterisk P I asterisk P2, so this thing. So uh, can you tell me the values? So C out I. Okay, if I schematically draw it, so if I schematically draw, say if this is say, if this is say I, what is the value of I? In the box, I store the value inside. And what is here, it, I write two, that is the address on the top, right? Uh, sorry, uh, address is five, address of I is five. Now, who stored the address of I? It is stored in P1, so this is a P1. So what value P1 stores? P1 st stores the address of I, that is uh, that is here. Address of I is, uh, sorry, this is I is storing 15 and address of I is five. And because it happens so, I can, so this is another way of uh, showing, schematically we can show. Okay, so as if P1 is pointing the finger towards the location of I, okay, he is there, right? So now if I store the address of, and what is the address of P1? Address of P1 is say, so this is say 2, in the top I denote the address. So if I declare something P2, which stores the address of 2, P2 has been allocated in the space starting from 9. So being the address here, it should be able to point to this one, right? And now I would like to store the address of P2 also in another variable say P3. So I am storing the value of P2, uh, address of P2 in P3 and P3 is capable, P3 is capable of pointing to this. And what is the address of P3? It is 15, right? So this is how we can schematically show. Instead of this memory map, I can show it this way also. So what, what are the values to be displayed here? Can you tell me quickly? Five. What is five. I? I is normal I. There is no. 15. 15, sir. 15. What is asterisk PI? Uh, asterisk p1 so asterisk p1 means so being here so you are say asterisk means you should be walking here and you know so I, I should be walking to his room and i should you know open the door and see that what is there inside so it is like i'm asking for this so asterisk means it will in direction it will take you to that location whichever it is pointing to and you are trying to get the value so what value will be displayed here 15 it will be 15. If I write P2, whatever P2 points to, P2 points to this one, right? So I write asterisk, asterisk P2. So the first asterisk, so it will be evaluated in this order. The first asterisk of P2, where it will be will be going? First asterisk. First, first asterisk will give you what value? Five. 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 And then Five. again asterisk means it will give you what? So you walk 15. to this part, 15. you walk to this part, and here. What value it will be displayed? 15. 15. And this one? Uh, so P3, so P3 is pointing to P3 is pointing to this one. So basically asterisk P3, you are here. Again an asterisk you are here. Again an asterisk you are here. Right? So it will be it will be giving you again 15, right? So this is what is called multiple indirections, right? So you can think of a simple analogy here that, so you see here is a director, so director of an institute, here is a dean and here is a HOD and here is a uh, CR. So if the CR needs to reach to the director, so the thing is uh, the director's address, say the director's bungalow's address is known by the dean. And the dean's bungalow's address or the residence address is known by the HOD only. And the HOD's address, residential address is known by the CR only, but not by the other students, right? So if the CR wants to reach to the director's uh, office and see what he's doing and all, so he should be actually going one in direction, two in direction, three in direction. So in other words, CR is how far from the director? How far? How many levels far? Three levels far. So that's why you require three indirections to reach to the director right there. Right? 
so this happens and this will have some analogy while we discuss about uh, the correlation with uh, pointers and uh, arrays so we'll see it later now what about the values here address of i this means address of i so what value will be displayed here address of i sir uh, address of i is 2 sir not 2 5 sir this 5 i think 5 sir then address of p1 what is address of p1 2 address two. of p2 9 address of p3 15 16 okay so up to this is it fine so th these parts are all all known to you let me just i'm trying to just revise the whole thing because there will be few things that uh, generally students feel uncomfortable later on so that's why means my experience says that i'm not sure whether there is some exception in this batch so that's why I'm, i i would like to spend some time on pointers in c++ okay otherwise i should have just skipped it and straight away started the references but because i have not taught you the pointers in c uh, because these these concepts are similar to c or c++ i just thought of just reviewing it and that is what i do generally okay so now let us talk about so what is the need for pointer for a pointer variable that we know what is the need for different type of pointer variables that we know and then how much space a pointer variable requires irrespective of what whatever the type is that also we know it's all the same and you also found that there can be multiple level of indirections and to reach to the actual element the contents of the element you have to use those number of asterisks in direction operators right so now legal and illegal operations so let us see initialization so this is integer int i equals to 5 now if i write int so what this p is p is a pointer to pointer to integer integer right now i am storing here so is that allowed first of all is this allowed address of i to a uh, integer pointer so this is perfectly allowed right we have just now checked it it's a floating point value and i am storing the address of f in a floating point pointer right so this is also allowed now if i write this so sometimes what happens uh, when you are declaring a pointer variable you really don't know that who that variable is going to point to which location it should point you, you really don't know so the best practice is you should not leave it as blank you should not uh, you should not just write integer asterisk p so a pointer variable should always be initialized and should not be left blank as garbage because uh, because what so if you have left as a garbage and if you somehow after uh, after a short while if you write asterisk p what is going to happen it will go to that garbage location so garbage means it will go to that location jump into that location and to try to access the values right are you getting my point hello yes sir so if you if you don't write here null if it, that is not written so what this uh, p will contain the the contents of p do you know what it will contain is it within your control because whatever it was contained earlier it will be containing that some bit patterns right so the values might be uh, pointing to some location say for example 1090 right so the p contains garbage so it, so the, the value that p contains as a garbage is 1090 now whose location it might be because in the ram you see the ram is not that small in the ram what are the things apart from your programs what other programs are also stored in the ram its the operating system programs the compiler code all the system softwares are also stored right so this garbage location may be somehow be Uh, the location corresponding to some system software some operating system routines so if after having it uninitialized if you write here asterisk c out asterisk p so what this means you are trying to attempt what hello a garbage value no garbage is fine but maybe that the garbage is actually the location corresponding to some system software code so having that garbage accepted if you use asterisk p that means you are trying to access that system software space right and that should not be uh, allowed it should be complete it must be completely prohibited because 
if you do so you might be illegally changing the contents of it and that can be dangerous for the system the system might crash so the operating system module in the uh, the the memory management module makes strict provisions that no such illegal accesses are allowed so that's why often in linux or you know unix type systems you will find that an uninitialized a properly uninitialized uh, pointers if by mistake you try to access the contents of it it might what kind of errors you get what is the error message that you often encounter without knowing the reason it's segmentation fault right hello yes sir so segmentation fault means you are trying to stepping up into some other you know some other person's uh, space or some other software space for which you are not a user because it's a multi user system you are not supposed to access the operating system codes there are ways but we'll talk about it later on in the operating system course right so that is the case so that's why it is always uh, uh, recommended strictly recommended that you should initialize a pointer variable and if don't have the uh, you, you don't have any valid uh, addresses to store just store it uh, store null value right null null is a specific uh, like uh, it's a it's a it's not a illegal kind of address but it's a address which is uh, treated to be uh, not a part of the ram locations like that so it's a special kind of address which is initialized uh, to a particular pointer variable if no values are known to it at that moment so if i write here like this say uh, so is this allowed i i store uh, i declare int asterisk q so q is also a integer pointer and i am storing the address of p uh, sorry the contents of p to q is that allowed yes sir so what p was pointing so if this is i say for example this is say i it is storing 5 so when i write say let us assume that this is not there right so if i write p uh, asterisk p address of i that means what this is p and p is pointing to i right now if i write q so q is another pointer variable q like this and what i write what i so whatever is the contents of p so whatever you have stored here will be copied here that means what because the contents of p is also copied to the contents of q so q also will be capable of pointing to i so this and this together actually makes this kind of logical view is that okay yes sir so what does it mean so the contents of p c contents means whatever con what p contains some address so that address has been copied to q and because of that the capability that p so p can point to i q also can point to i like this but will this be allowed you see i have so this p is a integer pointer now i say 2005 i would like to store uh, i mean i would like to manually store some address directly there will it be, will, will this be allowed will this be allowed mm, don't know no no just give uh, put your intention intuition no see are you managing the addresses are you managing addresses do you know that which address is uh, you can legally access which address locations and all this do you know that no. as a programmer no, sure. you really don't know you are not managing it so you should not forcefully store some values treating them as addresses to p because after that if you write asterisk p it might end up to some illegal segmentation fault so that illegal is you will get a segmentation fault and the program in immediately stops okay so we'll get into know the details of it during our operating system course how this is whole things handled but this is completely illegal so that's why such things are not allowed okay and if i write this one what does it mean what is this r r is a what is r so r is a fl floating pointer r is a pointer float to a float r is a pointer to float point uh, float entities right now and what is this p so p is a integer pointer so now you are trying to do what you are trying to store the contents of r that means 
contains of a floating point value uh, address of a floating point value into the address of uh, into the integer pointer getting the point so a person who can only uh, say faculties who can only store uh, crs addresses you are asking them to store the address of beans so will that be allowed no because you i mean even if you force it you don't know what is going to happen right because this p is if you if you increment p plus plus how they are going to be incremented by what value what amount 2 bytes 2 bytes 2 bytes but this r by its nature it should be it expects it to be incremented by 4 so you are not doing the correct thing right so this also will be not be allowed so this is not allowed this is not allowed right so this we can say that it's a incompatible incompatible assignment right because the type type of r is float asterisks type of p is int asterisks so they are not compatible right and you should not do that is that okay yes sir so may i so it's already 10:35 so may i stop it immediately or i can uh, extend for another 5 minutes you have i think you have got a class from 10:45 uh, 11:45 Yes. May I stop yes, it immediately? Sir. May I stop? Yes, sir. Uh, we want. Yes, sir. We want little break. Okay. So, uh, but I, I need a class tomorrow in the afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon uh, around four thirty. Are you available? You all? Okay. I'll talk to the CR. Okay, sir. Okay. Hmm. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye.